All right, part five to the groomsmen swords that I made. Uh, again, like the last video, I'm just gonna cut it down to just one sword, not all five, you know, get the time a little bit lower. Um, I'm still going pretty much in depth as much as I can. If you guys have any questions, definitely ask them in the comments. But uh, the last video, you saw me do the grinds to the blade itself. Uh, this one's going to pertain to the sheath itself. Uh, it's gonna be everything as far as the kydex goes from, you know, cutting it, molding it, you know, heating it, pressing it, shaping it, uh, as well as all the leather bits that I did for them. Drew those up in CAD, brought them in Adobe Illustrator, and then from there cut them on a Glowforge. Uh, and then basically just kind of married the two materials together. So uh, if you're looking to make a sheath, this is definitely a video to check out. Um, you know, the Fantasy Sword, that was all leather and uh, required hand stitching as well as the, uh, the eyelets being pressed in. This one is just strictly just the eyelets itself. But um, hopefully you guys are digging the videos. If you have any questions, like I said, let me know. Uh, other than that, we'll just go ahead and hop into um, part five, which is the sheath. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Enjoy. How's it going guys? So part five, which is the Kydex sheaths. This was uh, a really fun build to do. Right here we got uh, an order from knifekits.com. Any kind of knife making supplies you need, this is definitely the place to go. Uh, there's a lot of places you can get online, but so far this is the best one I've found. As far as Kydex goes, Kydex accessories, you know, clips, eyelets, anything and everything as far as making a sheath or even uh, handle material like spacers. Really great company. So there's all the sheets for all five swords. And just marking my cut lines. Now if you've ever done drywall, um, Kydex is a lot like drywall in the sense that if you just score one side and then give it a little, little break, it snaps right along that score line. It's really great to work with. You can even do curves and uh, a couple passes with the razor blade. Just give it a little bend, snaps right out. So there's all the all the pieces cut, and here are the swords. I went ahead and did uh, saran wrap around the blades, and then masking tape over that. Got gloves, got clamps like a mofo, and um, got all the got all the the pieces marked out. And there's my uh, foam and board kind of press, generic press. <laughs> so here we are in the oven. Now I had some little risers in there just to lift it up off the off the grates, so I didn't want the uh, you know the racks to leave to leave imprints on the kydex. But about 325, 325 degrees for just a couple minutes it gets it just hot enough. And definitely do not do this in an oven that you will be you know eating out of, <laughs> especially on a regular basis. All right, so after a couple minutes, when it gets flimsy, flimsy to the touch, it's good to go. Now I went ahead and marked the uh, the insides of the Kydex. There's Steph kind of anxiously waiting. She's my uh, my helper at this point. But I went ahead and had the inside of the the Kydex drawn out where the blade was going to sit, you know, so I could get a rough idea. Like, all right, so it should tip should be about here and center it along this line. And uh, essentially from there, just clamp it down as much as you can and as fast as you can. You know, a lot of knife makers, they are making smaller knives, which is great. Um, but to have a Kydex press for swords, it's it gets kind of janky. <laughs> but it works. This works really well. Uh, the foam in there is just foam from, uh, from Harbor Freight. And the, uh, the wood is just laminated countertop wood that I had spared left over. And Steph magically have socks. <laughs> Alright, so here we go, unclamping everything. Usually about three to four minutes. You know, it'll still be warm, but it won't be, uh, it won't be as pliable as it is out of the oven. So you can go ahead and take it out. And it'll hold its shape real well. Alright. 
And there we go. Got a nice form around the whole sword. And it's great when uh, when you have texture on, on anything, it'll pick it up real good. And here they all are. All pressed up. Alright, so at this point, I've basically printed out a paper template. So I have drawn these in CAD. And it basically calls out where all of my holes are for the spacing of all the eyelids. And that comes into, into play later on when I have the leather match up to the kydex as well. So that everything just flows evenly. The eyelids, you know, have perfect spacing all the way through. So what I have is a paper template taped down. And I've got all the center holes marked. And I'm just taking a hammer and a little tiny nail and giving a little, little pin prick all the way down. And uh, just drilling out those holes. Again, Kydex is a really fun material to work with, but man, does it get messy. All right. So at this point, I'm just scoring my uh, my edge lines because I'm basically made these parts of this sheath oversized so that I could, you know, straight edge them down to the final size. And just a score, and it breaks right off. And you know, Kydex, like I said, it gets messy, you know, drilling it. But when you get to the point of even grinding it, like I'll grind mine on the uh, on the belt sander, and the little particles that come off, they're like almost electrostatic. <laughs> they stick to everything. And uh, it sticks to the grinder, to the table, to anything and everything, the ground. It's, uh, it's definitely... A dirtier, well not dirtier, just messier material to play with. And here at this point, I'm go ahead and just match everything up. And get them flush. And right there I'm just showing that the uh, the eyelets are keeping the whole spacing together, that way I don't have any any movement or shifting in the front piece to the back piece. All right, so here comes the fun part. Just get everything flushed up, profiled, sanded all around, 
just getting the final edges all, all squared up. And uh, this is that point I was telling you about. Start sanding the stuff and it just starts getting everywhere. But it's really easy to shape, really forgiving. I've worked with Kydex for quite a few years now. Uh, I definitely like it on swords at this point, but uh, have used them on you know smaller knives, tac tactical butter knives, and uh, yeah, it's a really great material to work with. You know, once you get it hot, you can form it to any shape, and then once it cools, it's it's very very rigid. So it's a uh, it's a material I like working with a lot. Right, so here comes the tedious part. Popping eyelids. And for these swords, I think there were 48 of them per each, per each sheath. <laughs> so it was a lot of eyelids to, uh, to stock up on and then pop through. But I basically just go in, you know, every other couple holes, swapping sides. Just for the fact that if if I did them in a straight line all the way on one side, I didn't want to clamshell and kind of shift. So I went ahead and just kept hopping around back and forth, back and forth. You know, I first started doing Kydex. I know I've said it before in a lot of videos, but uh, I used to pop all these by hand, where basically you have uh, you have that tool, well, essentially a tool like it, a, a little tiny. Not even a press, but just the the male and female. You basically hammer it down, <laughs> and that gets old real quick. And it's actually really easy to uh, to split the eyelets. Where when you're when you're curling the backside over, if you're hammering it too hard or at the wrong angle, you could roll the edge or split the edge. This press is is a life saver, time saver. It's a great thing to have. If you're ever gonna do Kydex, I highly recommend it. Oh, and I should say, I, I use, uh, I can't remember the smaller size, but there's a smaller size eyelets that I use. These are the, uh, the quarter inch. And they come in different lengths as well. So if you have, you know, thicker materials to press through or multiple layers of Kydex, you can uh, you get them with longer posts so you can get through more material, thicker material. And not sponsored, but, uh, you know, knifekits.com is, like I said, a great place to get all that. They even have uh, colored eyelets and... Uh, brass eyelets that you've seen in the fantasy sword build. And I believe even the uh, the chopper challenge I used brass, brass eyelets. And essentially these black ones, they're, uh, they're coated brass. I'm not sure if it's powder coated, I think that would crack, but it's definitely got a coating because I've, I've ground them uh, a couple times and they are brass material. Now they're all finished up. All right, so here we are back in CAD, and that's where essentially where I had my whole layout, you know, spacing called out. And at this point, I need to uh, I need to get that leather to match up. So that's what I'm figuring out here. And some little spacers to go in between them because that's gonna gonna flush up with the kydex and here's my nesting for everything and the, uh, the straps as well and here's everything in Adobe Illustrator uh, I'll draw it in CAD pull it in Adobe Illustrator and then from there I can go ahead and you know add whatever etchings or logos that I want do my nest layout and then uh, 
save the file over for the Glowforge to cut out. And here we go. Yeah, the Glowforge was a purchase that I made about a year ago. And it was a hefty purchase. I would definitely say that. But the way that it just pumps out and produces quality parts over and over is amazing. You know, and I wish it did go this fast. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't. It does, uh, it does etch and cut pretty quickly. But, uh, it's by all, by all means, it's not slow. Because doing this by hand would be even longer. But, you know, it's a great machine. I love it. I love that I can take my files, you know, straight from CAD to Adobe Illustrator, which are programs that I've used for, you know, well over 20 years now. And translate exactly what I need right over, right over to the machine. Well, and I should say that uh, for each of the groomsmen, I did their, their initials. If that wasn't <laughs> already obvious for anyone that was that was wondering what all those, uh, what was inside those circles. I thought it would be a good way to personalize each one. Now that uh, first one on the right is doing a secondary pass because I think I ran it as a scribe which essentially just cuts a single line. And the second one I did is an etch, and I kind of wanted to see and compare between the two. And the scribe was a little too light, so I did the second one as an etch, and then that's when I figured out, well, I'll just go ahead and bypass over the first one with an etch. That way it, it comes in looking the same. And the, uh, the real big difference between the etch and the scribe on the Glowforge is uh, the scribe will essentially just follow a line, do one single pass, and the etch will do this almost like inkjet printer where it goes back and forth and back and forth and literally takes probably 10 times longer, but does does a thicker, deeper, and more accurate etch. So sometimes you get away with the scribe, but sometimes the etch just looks a lot better. And in this, in this case, it looked a lot better just to have the edge. So the extra, try, the extra time was no problem at all. Now I will say, all those little cutouts, um, the tedious part on this aspect of doing leather or anything really on a glowforge is it needs a masking over the material whether it be you know acrylic or wood or leather or whatever material you have in there that masking that's on top kind of blocks the uh, I don't want to see overspray but almost that heating that you see around the cuts and it protects it protects the face of the material basically but when you get done, you have to peel off that masking. And when you have a lot of tiny cuts, like all of these, you have to pull each and every little tiny piece off. <laughs> Which, in hindsight, um, you know, removing the masking would have been no problem because I'm doing a, a black stain on the leather, which you wouldn't even have noticed because the burning is very slight. It looks pretty, it looks pretty gnarly here on the masking tape, but on direct leather, Especially with a black stain, you wouldn't even notice it. But yeah, I had just uh, I had just gotten the Glowforge, and then I think it was about a month or two later they right raised the prices. I can't remember. I think it was like at least five or six hundred dollars, and I got the uh, the the biggest, best, whatever pro version where it's got a bypass and you can literally like open up a door and keep sliding material through so you can cut 
you know, an infinite length uh, of material. I've yet to use that bypass yet, but um, but yeah, it's a hefty price tag, but but they shortly raised the price right after that, which you know, it's a money maker. You know, if that's if that's what your primary resource of business is, you know, it definitely speeds up productivity. I will say I wasn't prepared though for the, uh, I guess, accessories that need to come with a Glowforge. Uh, it does need to run in an environment that's, I think at the hottest, about 80 degrees. And I have this in uh, in a laser room, quote unquote. It's basically a, a room just outside the garage. And it has AC to it, but it's not great AC, so I ended up having to put in a, uh, a window AC unit that blows directly on the Glowforge. There was getting some malfunctions to where it was too hot to cut, but uh, aside from that I did have to run more electrical and a separate breaker to just power the Glowforge, and also had to get an exhaust fan. They do sell one with the Glowforge, but I think it's an extra thousand. It might be more at this point, but uh, but I just ended up getting a really big, huge fan just to pull all the all the smoke out. Here we go, wiping away <laughs> all the masking tape. I wish it was that fast and easy to do, but uh, there's all the parts. You know, once the masking tape is off, it is it's very clean cut. So it's it's worth the time. Here we go on the stain. Again, this is uh I believe it's they're I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's Febrings, uh leather dye. It's the only leather dye I use. I think I've got maybe 13 or 14 different colors, but the uh, USMC black is the best black that they have. Um, there are a couple different blacks that they offer, but this one is the one that I like the most just because of how deep and dark of a black you can get. You don't have any other shades of like blues or purples or greens, you know, like base colors when they make black, it has a base color to start out. This one after a couple coats. It's jet black. So it's a really good dye. Now typically do mm, three to four, depending on you know how much etching there is on the leather or if the leather, you know, because each each hide is different, if the leather soaks up, you know, the dye, I'll end up having to do more and more. Or if it if it doesn't soak it up, I'll do more and more. If it soaks up real good, maybe just one or two passes. But when you have a lot of engraving on the leather, especially on the face, it soaks it up real well, real nice. Fabri-Tac. So I've used this uh, material since I've been doing, you know, cosplay swords out of aluminum and using suede for the handle wraps. Uh, Fabri-Tac is just something that bonds fabric to other materials, and it's it's pretty forgiving. It's almost like a almost like a rubber cement, but that's what I'm using in this in this instance to bond the leather to the Kydex. It doesn't have to be, you know, the strongest bond. It will hold, you know, better than any other material, especially at this point, because it will be, you know, the leather will be pressed with the eyelets to the kydex. So it's really just getting everything lined up and making sure it's not going to shift or move or 
you know, over time do anything funky. Just pressing the eyelets, getting it all, getting it all finished off. Now I didn't get footage, but at one point Steph, uh, Steph stepped in and was like, "Hey, let's use some of that gold uh, leather dye and you know paint inside the uh, the initials." So she went ahead and uh, hand painted inside each one of those. And in the final pics, you'll end up seeing those. But for now, this is uh, this is the end of this video, and the next one will be all about the. Uh, the Cerakoting that Steph does for me, she does an excellent job and did some really good finishes on these. So keep an eye out because it's going to cover all the Cerakotes she did on these. But again guys, thank you so much for watching and take care.